Alright, so starting back up from the bridge, this is part two of Baltar Baltaria Palace. Ugh. Um So for those of you who have never played Demon Souls, you're probably recognizing a lot of familiar scenes and familiar enemies. Um, the bigger Black Knight thingies, or, well, what are they called? I think they're just called knights. Let's take a look. Yeah, they're just knights. Um, the bigger knight guys, or the blue eye knights, or the red eye knights, are quite a bit like the Black Knights from, or the Silver Knights from Dark Souls. They have very similar animations. They have the charging um, thrust attack. They have big white, big wide sweeps. Oh, I can't talk this video. Sorry. They have a lot of really similar attack animations. Um, then we also have the dragon that swooped down and killed everybody on the bridge. Um, there's just a lot of really similar stuff. Going from Demon Souls to Dark Souls was pretty neat because there were a lot of new, there were, there's a, a greater variety of environments and in Dark Souls, but overall the enemy variety was, wasn't was too great. I felt like it really picked up with the DLC. The DLC is where it really shined, I think. Also, you could actually kill that dragon, um, and he gives you a trophy in his soul, um, but you do need a lot of arrows, quite a bit of arrows, and you need a lot of time. So this is the boss room. God, spear enemies are the worst in this game. Especially the uh, the blue-eyed spear knights, they're pretty bad to you. Pole arms in this game are pretty ridiculous in general. Okay, so these- this enemy coming up here is a part of the boss enemy. He kind of like breaks off these little bead- beady slime enemies. Um, he's just one big slime. They're kind of annoying because there's no way to get really past them. You have to hit them from behind in order to do any real damage. Um, and sometimes like this one just blocks your path, but the other ones aren't- aren't that bad. Sometimes they'll be up against walls or just kind of annoying in general. I also think that if I have enough time, I'll do the pure white world tendency event of this area. Well, both of them. There's quite a few. I'll probably try to get the colorless demon soul or the gray demon soul. I think it's a colorless. I think that's what they're called. I think gray demon soul is a vanguard. Um, so I'll probably try to get the first colorless demon soul, which normally you only get from the primeval demons. Um... Also feel free to feel free to correct me in the comments too. I probably should have done like a bunch of uh, bunch of research to sort of like refresh my memory. So here's here's the boss. 
He's covered in a bunch of those little guys. Um, he's really weak to fire. So it was actually better that I w it was actually a better idea for me to save most of my fire bombs. I kind of wasted them throughout the level because I have horrible aim with them. Um, but it gets rid of the guys really fast. Another good way to fight him is if you get turpentine, uh, which I believe I do have, and I'll show you guys how to go about using that against him. Oh, that was a bad one. Okay. So let's throw in some turpentine. Hey, they move pretty fast too, which is kind of obnoxious. Um, also, if you kill him uh, before you kill all the little guys, it's actually really efficient because they all just sort of die once you kill him. But um, even after they fall off his body, sometimes they'll climb back on, especially when he has low health. So they have really kind of interesting AI, even though he's kind of a pushover of a boss. Um, the only problem is if you get stun locked by him, but if you kill most of the little guys with firebombs, you really don't have to worry about it as much. But I don't know if you guys noticed, but he's very, very, very similar to the demon that you encounter in the Painted World. Um, sort of another carryover. The enemies are very similar, so. Alright, so when we touch this, uh, normally for those of you who did not beat the tutorial boss, um, you will have to beat the Tower, Mite, Tower Knight in order to get Pure White World Tendency. Um, but since I just beat... That, well, the Tower Knight's the second boss. He's the next boss after... Phalanx, or however you, however you pronounce it. Um, but, blah, 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 I just beat him, so I have pure white world tendency now, so I'm gonna go back, fight Meralda, get the purple flame shield, and the colorless demon soul. Um, so, oh, I skipped the cinematic on accident, sorry. So pretty much the, the maiden in black wants me to go talk to the monumental. There's gonna be a little cutscene up here for you guys. So you guys get to hear more lore. Oh, I should also show you guys the Pantheon as well. Let's see how much time I have. I have plenty of time. We can do this. Except the Monumental talks a lot. But I don't know if you can see, there's all these little dead kids. We have long awaited you, Slayer of Demons. I am one of the Monumentals. We preserve the fabric of reality. There is something thou needest to know. Once, we too, a scourge of demons faced. In the distant past, under a benevolent rule, the world was united owing to the soul arts. Until a lust for power caused the awakening of the Old One. Across the land seeped a colorless deep fog, and the world faced extinction at the hands of the demons. Thanks be, we were able to lull the Old One back to his slumber. Yet only after the loss of innumerable souls, and half the world lost, erased by the fog. In order to mend the fabric of what land still remained, we entrusted six elders with six precious archstones. One to the king of a small yet diligent land. One to the king of the burrowers underground. One to the wise queen of the great ivory tower. One to the chieftain of lost and ill-fortuned souls. One to the shaman of the tempest-worshipping shadowmen. And the last to the great giants of the northern lands. 
the arch stones were placed at nodes across the earth. We contained the old one inside this nexus and banned the soul arts. Finally, we became monumentals, half-living sentinels of the fabric of reality. Alas, the other monumentals have perished, and only I remain. If not, the deep fog will absorb all that we know. Have you the strength to accept this mission? I'm going to say no because he makes a really funny laugh and it makes me crack up every time. Yes, I see. That is unfortunate. You should know that you will be imprisoned in the Nexus forever. Just like the poor candle maiden. <laughs> I love. But yeah, it kind of shows sort of like the monumentals. Um, I mean, he kind of threatened me. He's kind of a little punk. Uh, it kind of shows how they don't really, don't really care about you or the well-being of you or whatever. I just want you to solve the issue. And they also trapped the candle maiden as well. That's another big point. So this is a pantheon. This is something that was taken out of Dark Souls. I mentioned it a couple times in the other videos. But here you get to actually look at um, sort of like the different titles that they give some of the players. Let's do United of the World. Which is really neat. I like that a lot. Um, but I mean like a lot of, I think the reason why they took it out of Dark Souls is because, um, just like, just like, or <laughs> took it out of Dark Souls, um, I think the reason why they didn't include it in Dark Souls is because a lot of the awards they gave people, like the most souls obtained, uh, sort of like, I believe that they were exploitable, I, I don't know if that's actually true, but I've heard people c sort of complain about the fact that it's been exploited before, um, and that a lot of the people who are there are just kind of stuck there forever. And so nobody really pays the Pantheon much mind. But I could be wrong again. Um, I think that was just a rumor. That was just somebody who was complaining. <laughs> but I really like the idea of the Pantheon. And I, I'm pretty glad that they sort of included, like, the arena in the uh, Ulysseal DLC. Because it sort of gave us something like that. Something to recognize some of the players and make it feel more like a community-based game. Okay, so now I can level up. I'm gonna save the rest of those souls for blacksmith and other things that are really important. I figure I might as well just give me a little boost. What is it? Does that so after go let soul of the mind key to life's ether. Soul of the lost withdrawn from its vessel. Let strength be granted so the world may Okay, so now I'm in body form. I have my full health and you can actually see me. I'm not as transparent as I was before. Um, I don't have this weird little like film over me. Kind of looks like weird stuff. And I believe that the other NPCs should have appeared now that I've beaten Flanks. So we got um, some of the faith people and then we have some mages on the other side. Which is... Neat. But I'm gonna go back to Boletaria 1-1. Um, and fight Meralda. See what how much time. So I have some time. So I'm gonna show you guys too what it looks like to have pure white world tendency. So as you can see, my Boletarian palace is much brighter than all the other ones. Um, it's very subtle. It's a very subtle difference. 
which is kind of the difficult part of the world tendency, um, is that you actually have to kind of look at sort of like a picture in order to really see where you're at. Okay, so now that I have pure white world tendency, this gate is open. Um, and going through here will show me where the sub-boss Meralda is. And you, if you have pure white world tendency, you get her armor, which is female-specific only. And then with- oh, and you get a ring as well. Um, and then with pure black world tendency, you get her weapon, which is the guillotine axe. It's pretty short reach, but it's really fast. Um, then I'm also going to show you guys, these are black phantom enemies. Typically they only spawn in pure black world tendency. You're going to see them in like a second. I'm trying to make them spawn one by one because they're kind of annoying. Oh, I failed that. But they only really appear in um, black world tendency, but for whatever reason they like to appear in Meralda's area. I'm just being really sloppy right now. Dredglings... This place is really good for farming crescent moon grass. <laughs> crescent moon grass. Um, so if you don't kill uh, Meralda, then you can just keep this area open and just come back here whenever you need it. But I'm actually going to close it because I really like Meralda's armor. Um, it's really good for females. It's really good light female armor. Um, I actually use it throughout the entire game, so it's really important to pick it up. Another thing too, uh, I'm going to kind of progress slowly here so I don't spawn too many of them this time. some turpentine because okay so I got 18 minutes I may I'll, I'll make this video a little bit longer than my other ones, just so I could show you some of the secrets in this area. Because um, the Meralda fight's going to take me a couple minutes. She's really strong. I do chip- pretty much you have to backstab her. I mean, you don't have to, but you do chip damage to her, and it it's kind of ridiculous. Um, she has a lot of health. And she does a lot of damage. She hits really hard. She wants to come out. There she is. No mercy. I'm just gonna. Oops, that was a failed kite. Come on, come on, world. Enemy AI, man. <laughs> I get really nervous doing this fight. Did I make her bleed? That's weird. I didn't know Broadsword can do bleed damage. Bleed in this game is more like poison. It doesn't take off chunks of health, but it just does damage over time.
<laughs> she got stuck. No, don't fall off. Come back. Come back. Don't fall. Hate trying to parry the guillotine axe, oh my god. Okay, so let's see how much time we're at. We're at 21 minutes. So that's a binded set. Binded armor. I'm gonna keep on my old ragged gloves and, and bottoms because it's really heavy. Or it's not very heavy, but it's pretty heavy for my level. Let me see if I can actually put the pants on. Yeah, yeah, that's good. Um... A binded cross that looks really cool. If you go in here, you can fall down a bunch of rafters and get the colorless demon soul, but there's a very high risk of you dying in body form in order to get it, and I'm not going to do that risk um, because I want to get the purple flame shield before I die. Um, although I don't think it registers until you go back to the nexus, I just want to be sure. I'll come back and get it later. Um, maybe in another video or something. Um, but pretty much, okay, so the thing with world tendency is once you kill... A friendly NPC, um, your world tendency could actually go down. Or sort of, not a, f I guess a friendly, is it a friendly NPC? I know that that affects your character tendency, but, um, I know that when you kill Meralda the way that I killed her, it's actually going to lower my, uh, world tendency, so I won't be able to go back there if I go back to the Nexus, if that makes sense. Um, so pretty much if I were to go back to the Nexus right now, the dragons would be back, I wouldn't be able to get the shield, and... Um, that caged area will be closed, so I won't be able to go back there. Um, let's see what else. I'm trying to think of the fastest way I can get to the, uh, the dragons. Maybe if I just try running. I'll just run through. The cool thing about some of the enemy AI in this game is that once you get past a certain point, they don't chase you that far. They'll actually go back to where their their spawn point was, although I, I think these guys might actually trace me, chase me all the way out here. Yeah, they will. <laughs> Damn it. But in most cases, they run back to where they were standing. I hate, I hate spear guys. Oh my god. I hate you guys so much. I'm probably gonna die here now. Thank god, this is like, Boletari is the only area you encounter polearm users, which is, oh, thank god, thank god. Oh, 
I'm gonna try to just like kite all these guys up here and just run past them. See if that's a viable strategy. <laughs> More spear guys, because my life is horrible. Spear guys, no! <laughs> Go away. I don't like you. I think I have all the enemies in this game, spear guys, man. Spear guys are the worst. I don't even care. Okay, so the dragons aren't here. Hopefully, the, hopefully the, the guards haven't followed me, but um, so you get some pretty good items. You actually get a really good ring out here as well. Um, purple flame shield, which is what I'm actually going to be using uh, until I get the dark magic -y one, that one shield. So flame resistance is really good. Uh, great ring of strength actually is sort of like your Havel's ring. It increases your equipment burden. So I can wear a bunch of ridiculous stuff right now. I can actually take this cling ring off and put something else. So I'll put the thief's ring. Um, so now I can actually wear like the full binded set if I wanted to, I think. Yeah. We can sort of get a close look at Meralda's set. Ooh. It's really neat. But yeah, I think that's the end of this video. Um, I'll probably trek back and then get the colorless demon soul at the beginning of my next video. I'll probably do tower night next. And yeah.